Let's talk about everything you need to know about deep conditioning. Hey there guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're brand new here, hi, my name's Courtney and this is how you can find me and my hair 90% of the time. Just kidding. Two years ago, I got really interested in this thing called the curly girl method. And I became fascinated with how using tips and tricks from this method improved the health of my hair. So when I first started the curly girl method, my hair definitely looked like this. And then after lots of hard work, dedication, and learning what my hair liked and didn't like, it now looks like this, or, or like this, when it really needs to be clarified and deep conditioned. So today, that is what we're talking about. We're talking about all of my tips and tricks <clears throat> for clarifying and deep conditioning. <laughs> So this is my hair after being in a bun for three days. We're pretty stretched out. I'm pretty sure I did product-free hair and my product-free hair tends to be very straight with a little bend at the end and the odd kink in it. It won't lay perfectly straight and smooth. But anyway, this is my hair when I have been at the beach wearing it in a bun and I'm long overdue for a good clarify and deep condition. So first off, I want to talk about how often you should deep condition. This is a huge point of contingency in caring for your hair. Some people say you've got to deep condition every week. Heck, deep condition every time you wash your hair. Some people say don't deep condition more than once a month. How often are you to deep condition and do it the most effectively? Some people say you should deep condition on dirty hair before you wash it. Save yourself some time, get your hair wet, slap deep conditioner on it, even though there's like lots of product and build up on your hair. Let that sit and then wash and style as normal and you get all the benefits of deep conditioning. Some people say you should sleep overnight in your deep conditioner and they think that's a great idea. Apparently I'm opinionated on this subject if your favorite method of deep conditioning is deep conditioning on dirty hair with product buildup on it or sleeping with deep conditioner in your hair overnight, if, if you disagree with me on the best way to deep condition, I am glad that you have found a great way to deep condition for your hair, but here are all of my thoughts on the most effective way to deep condition your hair. First off, it is important that you remove all buildup from your hair because in my experience, every time I've deep conditioned on dirty hair, meaning that it's like day four hair, I've done a couple product refreshes, there's lots of product in my hair, I tend to be pretty oily and greasy and prone to buildup anyway. When I put deep conditioner on my hair, even if I've wet it down in the shower before applying the deep conditioner, with all that buildup on my hair, my hair does not soak up the deep conditioner at all. It's like I didn't do anything. I completely wasted the deep conditioner. In my experience, when I actually get the most moisturized and the most benefit out of my deep conditioner is when I clarify before. And this is what I'm gonna be using today. This is the Neutrogena Anti-Residue Shampoo. Yes. Before you come for me, I know that this isn't Curly Girl approved. This actually contains water and sodium lauryl sulfate, which is the more mild, gentle sulfate. Sodium lauryl sulfate is kind of like the big, strong, <laughs> clarifying sulfate that's like maybe a little too harsh. This one has the slightly gentler one in it. The reason I find that using a mild sulfate the most effective is, is that is what removes oil buildup the best. It also will help remove any accidental silicone usage and just about any other ingredient that is prone to building up on your hair. You will have the best chance at removing all that buildup off of your hair with something that does contain that ingredient. But once you've used a sulfate, your hair will be pretty stripped. So you're never 
ever gonna use a shampoo with a sulfate in it without having carved out the time in your day to sit with deep conditioner on your hair afterwards. Just don't do it. Just, if you can't deep condition that day, don't use a shampoo with a sulfate. So the first trick to deep conditioning is absolutely using something that's going to give you a very clean slate so that your hair will have the maximum potential to soak up all the deep conditionery goodness. My second tip for deep conditioning is to really comb, finger comb that deep conditioner through your hair, brush it through with a brush. I find that when I go ahead and brush my deep conditioner through with a brush, no strand of hair is missed. Every single strand is coated in deep conditionery goodness. And then I will do a very thorough squish to condition with my deep conditioner to make sure that I'm giving my hair max absorption. What squish to condition does is it doesn't actually squish the deep conditioner into your hair. What it does is it actually allows the water and deep condition to emulsify in your hair, get really well mixed together, and water will help that deep conditioner penetrate into your hair better than if there wasn't enough water in your hair. Doing a good squish to condition allows you to feel if there's enough water in your hair for that deep conditioner to kind of swoosh around. Remember, when we squish to condition, think about swishing mouthwash around in your mouth. You're not gonna squish so hard that all that deep conditioner comes out of your hair and like squishes between your fingers. You're just going to swoosh it around nice and gently. You're not gonna be closing your hands all the way. My next trick to very effective deep conditioning is using something like, I forgot to grab it. You can use something like the Thermal Hair Care Hot Head to deep condition with heat. You know, I know I've said this before on my channel that having one of these is not necessary. And while I still think it's not necessary, I will tell you that for 100%, yes, this is a Christmas pattern. <laughs> I purchased this with my own money. This is from the Thermal Hair Care website. I bought the one on sale because the Christmas pattern was on sale. I also really like Christmas. Anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna turn the pattern the right way up so you can see the cute reindeers. I will say that I had one of these when I first started doing the Curly Girl Method. There are flax seeds sewn into the cap, so you heat it up in the microwave, those flax seeds get all warm and toasty and they really retain the heat well, and then you put it on your head. You're not supposed to get the flax seeds wet. And in my first thermal hair care hot head, I definitely got the flax seeds wet and they may have molded. <laughs> so I kind of had to throw away my first hot head. And then for months and months and months after that, I just used a nice terry cloth towel to help trap in heat. I even would throw it in the dryer and heat it up a little bit and then wrap my head up with it. And then on a whim, I decided to get another hot head. I actually got one for my sister and for me. And I have noticed a huge difference in my deep conditioning game when I got, the, got another one of these. The other trick I have is to use a shower cap to trap in your deep conditioner and then put on your thermal hair care hot head. I cannot hear anymore. This is covering up my ears. <laughs> this is a reusable shower cap that I got in a Wee Dad gift set many moons ago, but I will have some good dupes for these linked in the description down below. I just get lazy with running out and repurchasing plastic shower caps. So this one's been going strong now for years. <laughs> Probably should switch it out, but it's fine. So after jabbering about a hot head and a shower cap for a very long time, what I do is after I've squished to condition my hair really good with my deep conditioner, I will wrap it up on top of my head. I'll put on that reusable shower cap. I'll put on my thermal hair care hot head after heating it up as per the instructions. And then I will leave it on my hair for 15 to 30 minutes. When I deep condition with heat, I tend to deep condition for less time. 
If I'm not using heat, I will actually deep condition for 30 to 45 minutes. Now here's the kicker. I personally have found that I have over moisturized my hair wildly when I leave my deep conditioner on for longer than 60 minutes. I do not recommend no matter how coarse, how dry your hair is to leave your deep conditioner on for longer than an hour. That is kind of a recipe for messing with your protein moisture balance. It's just gonna to be too much. It would actually be better to up the frequency of your deep conditioning sessions rather than to have less deep conditioning sessions that are longer, if that makes sense. My next tip for deep conditioning is to rinse your deep conditioner out thoroughly and then apply a little bit of leave-in to your hair. Really rake it through, maybe brush it through with your brush, squish to condish with your leave-in, and then do nothing else to your hair. And here's why. I personally only have so much time in my day that I can spend doing my hair, and when I am spending all this time clarifying sitting with deep conditioner on my hair, by the time I get to the point where I can style it, I've already used up my allotted hair time of the day for that day. So oftentimes I will actually go product free after deep conditioning. And I have found that because of like these time restrictions that have kept me from being able to style my hair after deep conditioning, that it really allows me to touch and feel my hair and see how the deep conditioning treatment affected my hair. So I use deep conditioning a lot to help me balance protein and moisture. When my hair is over moisturized, I will use a protein heavy deep conditioner. When my hair has too much protein, I will use a moisture heavy deep conditioner to help balance my hair out. And going product free allows me to really feel if the problem has been corrected or not without any product getting in the way and interfering with how it feels, if that makes sense. If you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about, I do have two videos on my channel talking all about protein moisture balance. You are welcome to check them out after this video. <laughs> but I will say that even though oftentimes I go product free so that I can see how my hair's doing, in the beginning, I would clarify deep condition and then go through the whole applying gel, styling, plopping, diffusing process, and I would see amazing hair days after I clarified and deep conditioned. I no longer do that because I can't spend that much time on my hair unless it's on a good self-care Sunday, which sometimes I still do a clarified deep condition and styling session. Anyway, that being said, you do not have to style after you clarify and deep condition if you don't want to. I personally tend not to so that I can see what's going on and I'll just like run a brush through my hair and let it air dry. Honestly, I don't even plop or diffuse. I just air dry so that I can really feel the things. You could plop and diffuse with no product in your hair if you wanted to. You could 100% style your hair after clarifying and deep conditioning as well. All right guys, I am back. I have let my hair 100% air dry and you can see I've, I've definitely been running my fingers through my hair. That's another reason I like going product free after I deep condition. It just feels good to be able to run your fingers through your hair sometimes. But you can absolutely see that my hair is so shiny. Oh, it's so happy right now. There's not a whole lot of wave and bend in my hair with no product in it, but I can feel that my hair feels better than it did before I started. So anyway, those are all my tips and tricks on getting the most out of your deep conditioner. I sure hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and share it. It really does help me out and it lets me know that the video was actually helpful, which also is like kind of why I'm here. I want to be helpful. And I would love it if you'd stick around for some more videos. So go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell. And lastly, if you have just stumbled across this thing called the Curly Girl Method and are feeling really overwhelmed and would like a fast track to learning all this information in a very condensed, 
efficient and combined sort of way, you are welcome to check out Courtney's curl class. I created this like online course that has everything I wish I had had when I first started doing the curly girl method. To learn everything, it eliminates all the mistakes I made and it gives you my exact step-by-step -step formula for doing the Curly Girl Method and starting everything off on the right foot. All right, guys, I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I will talk to y'all later. Bye!